do a news analysis suggesting the debt ceiling may expire as early as February 15th. This is by a very respected think tank. So I want to know if Republicans are still embarked on a government shutdown, no debt ceiling hike, kamikaze mission. That's my take. Here now is Katie Pavlich, news editor for townhall.com. All right, Katie, I'm just here to say if the GOP keeps talking government shutdown and if the GOP keeps talking about no debt ceiling, this is a political kamikaze mission of the first rank. Well, I think, I think it is, considering that the White House has said repeatedly, including today, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said that President Obama is not willing to negotiate with the debt ceiling at all. Um, but you do have uh, Senator Mitch McConnell coming out over the weekend saying that he's not all the way for a government shutdown, but it might be on the table. You have a uh, newly minted Senator Ted Cruz saying that it's something that actually may lead to less spending and, and more reform. He actually credited welfare reform in the Clinton era uh, to the, the government shutdown of the 1990s. And so they're talking about it. Whether they're going to be able to pull off both, I'm not so sure. I mean, I don't know why they don't just rally around the spending sequester. That's the issue. They didn't get any spending cuts in that uh, godforsaken tax bill that we signed last week. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the rallying point. And Katie, that gets the GOP on a much higher political ground where they can actually do some good and round up some support. Right, yeah, and you also have the emotional side of what the left likes to use in their arguments of military families suffering and, and also some defense contractors in a time of war. And so that is something I think Republicans could get their arms around. But uh, Je uh, Senator Jeff Sessions is coming out today, and he's been saying this actually for a couple months, um, and, and the last time the debt ceiling uh, debate came around, and that's if, 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 if uh, Democrats want uh, the debt ceiling raised, then they should have Harry Reid produce a budget. Because right. if they want more spending, they should be telling the American people well, exactly where their money's going. I don't mean to cut you off on that point, but Senator Sessions is coming on this show later on. Good. And then you'll have a chance to comment on his comments. Um, one last one, Katie. The Boehner rule, which I really like. You want to raise the borrowing limit by a dollar, then you got to mm -hmm. cut spending by a dollar. I right. think the Boehner rule is very sound fiscally, and it's very sound politically. Right, one to one seems pretty equal, right? But considering in this, like you said, mess of a fiscal cliff together, we just got forty-one dollars in tax hikes per one dollar in so-called spending cuts, with middle tax, uh, middle class taxes going up. I doubt that we're going to get that either. This this president has made very clear he's not willing to negotiate on anything. He not only wants the debt ceiling raised. Let's not forget before the fiscal cliff deal, he said he wanted the debt debt ceiling eliminated. And so that's the kind of negotiating that the president uh, is, is putting forward, even though. He he said he's willing to compromise on certain things. Uh, he's gonna haven't have seen to. that yet. He's going to have to negotiate. He is going to have to negotiate. That's what we've said for a long time, and uh, I don't see any negotiations coming from there. Yeah, part. well, if the GOP plays its cards right and sticks to the spending sequester and the Boehner rule on one to one, I think that will put Obama back on the defense. But, Katie, stick around because you're going to yep. rejoin us later in the program. We've got much more cooking for you. So, why should taxpayers tolerate a higher debt ceiling? if the Senate continues to refuse to print a budget that'll tell us where that money is going. Joining us now from Mobile, Alabama, Senator Jeff Sessions, ranking member on the Senate Budget Committee. Mr. Sessions, Happy New Year. Welcome back. You have made this a cause. Thank you. It is an important cause. Without a budget, which is uh, specified by law, why should taxpayers grant greater borrowing authority? That is a very good question. Just 17 months ago, uh, the president got a $2.1 trillion increase in the, in the uh, limiting, limit, debt limit of the United States so he could continue to borrow that much money. He's already gone through that. December 31st, Secretary Guyton has said we've already basically hit the debt ceiling again. And so I think any banker that's asked to raise the loan limit of its customer would like to see a financial plan of how they're going to handle the money if they're allowed to borrow more. And that's exactly where we are, I think. When you talk to your counterparts, let's see if I get this right, uh, Ken Conrad was the Democratic chairman of the Budget Committee, is that correct? That's correct. All right, so he's, you know, sort of a moderate Democrat. Why won't he make a budget? That's what I don't get. Is it Harry Reid that is stopping this? Is it Barack Obama that is stopping this? Because, again, the point I want to make, which you've made a million times, taxpayers should know where the money's going if they're going to say, go on ahead and borrow it again. 
I'd like, I'll tell you why they won't write one, and we'll just note that Kent Conrad last year was determined to bring a budget to the committee and actually mark one up, but on the day before it happened, Harry Reid and the Democrat colleagues told him not to do it and blocked him from doing so. The reason they don't want to do a budget is because it would require them to state to the American people how much money they're going to tax, how much they're going to spend, and what kind of financial plan they have for the future. They do not want to do that, and it's a, uh, really a sad and disgraceful time that the, con the Senate will not follow the law and lay out their plan. And remember, Larry, we've complimented Paul Ryan on being courageous for the budget he wrote that's a good budget. Why was he courageous? Because he put out numbers, real numbers, that people could analyze and examine. Mm. And that's what the Senate and the President uh, do not want to happen in our Senate. The only issue from up here that I have, I have no problem with anything you've said, and this, you know, budget failure, 1,350 days breaking the law is just outrageous. It's, that, it's just, it's outrageous, like the Imperial Congress. But do you worry when you talk about not raising the debt ceiling? That has domestic and international financial implications. People up here on Wall Street just get real nervous when uh, important people, opinion makers like yourself, say we won't re-up the debt ceiling. Well, I think they should tell the president, um, why don't you re uh, allow budget to go forward? Instead of blaming the Republicans for saying we won't raise the debt limit unless you write a budget. I know this can be a difficult financial issue, and the Congress and Republicans need to be sensitive to it, Larry. I'm fully aware of that. But I, I would say that uh, if the result of uh, some temporary uh, period of dispute results in real spending limitations, putting the country on a sound financial path, don't you think it would make the world feel better about America than they do now when they must wonder, will we ever uh, get our house in order? Well, sometime in my lifetime, there's got to be some serious spending restraint. Many thanks to Senator Jeff Sessions. We appreciate you coming back on, sir. Let's go back to our panel, Blake Zeff, Janine Turner, and Katie Pavlich. Blake Zeff, I want to hear you defend the Senate Democrats who haven't put a budget up in 1,350 days, which is against the Budget Reform Act law. Well, look, you know, I was just watching Senator Sessions as you were, and I think the idea that he's going to use uh, the debt ceiling to try to elicit this budget is, is, is scary because, look, bringing, bringing this budget through, I understand the idea is to expose, uh, you know, deficit spending. And I, I get all that. And of course, the Republicans drove up deficits when they were in office. And that's something that I think Democrats will remind voters if it came to that. But the idea that we're going to use the debt ceiling as some sort of political pawn here is very scary to, as you just said, business leaders and others. The senator said, well, wouldn't it send a terrible message to the rest of the country about our spending and all that? Well, if you go over the debt ceiling, the, the global economic ramifications of those will be far worse than anything else. Yeah, I understand. But, but, but Katie, did you listen carefully? Blake didn't really answer the question. This is right. very important, Katie. I asked him about the failure of the Senate to make a budget, which by law, this goes right. back to the Budget Reform Act of 1974, for heaven's mm -hmm. sakes, why they haven't done it for 1,350 days. So if Blake won't answer it, Katie, maybe you can. Well, I think uh, Senator Jeff Sessions was correct in saying that if this, the Democrats put forward a budget, they're going to have to show the American people exactly what they're spending their money on, and it's not going to look pretty. I'll give Blake something scary, $16.4 trillion in debt. It's a, either a slow march to death or it's a short march to death, and we're on both paths right now without a budget. And one thing that isn't talked about a whole lot with Harry Reid and his uh, you know, illegal moves not to uh, even introduce a budget for 1,300-plus days is the fact that he has created financial crises year after year after year. And the trillion-dollar deficits that we see are a direct response to the lack of, a set of the Democrats in the Senate producing a budget. Janine, let me go back to you on this. All right, down in Texas, they just reported, if I'm not mistaken, they have very strong economic growth. They lowered taxes, and they've actually increased budget surpluses. So mm -hmm. it's a good supply-side economic growth story. What's missing here from the national story? Nobody talks in those terms nationwide. I know Rick Perry gave it a shot. He didn't make it for president. But that doesn't mean the Texas model couldn't be used in Washington. Oh, well, absolutely. Well, Texas is doing it. Oh, well, Texas is doing a great job, um, and uh, I wish the rest of the country would emulate it. One of the which is we, we have in our Constitution that we keep a balanced budget. 
Um, and I, I think that the fact that we don't have one in our country is morally reprehensible. And, you know, this is going to sound really, really radical, uh, but I really feel when it gets to these sequesters and to the fiscal cliff and the debt ceiling, well, the sequester and the debt ceiling that's coming up, let it happen. Uh, George Washington may be horrible for the economy, may be incredibly de detrimental, but George Washington said the problem with a democracy is that the people can't see it until they feel it. And let's, let's just let it happen. And then maybe finally people will roll up their sleeves and go, wait, oh, we have a problem here. We need to do something about it. You think that with pressure? Let, let me go around the table on that, Blake. Suppose we just let it happen. All right, suppose we default on our debt. I don't want to. I don't think it's good for the U.S. Suppose oh. we default. Suppose we can't cut spending. Suppose Janine is right and nothing happens and maybe that's the best possible thing. Your thought? Absolutely not. It would have terrible global ramifications. All of a sudden, you're telling the rest of the country, the rest of the world, that this is a country that doesn't pay its commitments. I think that's a terrible, terrible message. And the idea that this would put would put a curb on spending for the president doesn't make sense when it's the Congress, as you know, Larry, that decides the spending. And so Congress needs to take up these issues amongst themselves. Yeah, but the but Senate not, won't. The point you dodged is the Senate won't yeah. take up the issue. They won't give you a money and financial and spending blueprint. I don't know how you do a sequester if the one of the two major chambers won't play by the rules. That's the problem here. That's what Jeff Sessions was saying, Senator Sessions. Well, I want to say, I want to say, Larry, uh, that the Senate Democrats, led by Harry Reid, did pass a budget a couple months into President Obama's first term. And that has been now the baseline for spending. It had a lot of spending in it, which we've seen now for four years. So that's the budget that they're going off of. And so for Blake to blame Republicans, who have introduced a budget every year by law, is just not true to the facts. Yeah, did they do, wait, did they do that in, in the last decade when George Bush was running up all those deficits? It's, it's Barack Obama's second term. Let's get over George Bush. Okay, please. but I'm saying it's a bipartisan issue. Let's, you're the one who said that I was well, trying to blame it on one then party. Then President Obama can start, start negotiating about how we're going to get the $16.4 yeah, trillion dollars see, in debt you, under control. You know, Janine Turner, I should say this. The budget deficit as a share of GDP as late as 2007 under George Bush was 1.6 percent. We would take that in a nanosecond right now. I'm going to think about your thoughts, Janine. Maybe we ought to just let the whole thing unravel. Maybe that kind of shock therapy is what we need, like Argentina or something like that. Anyway, thank you, Katie, Blake, and Janine. We appreciate it. Now,